Hey everyone, Zaina here and welcome to episode 10 of Are the Salmon Running? So for probably the past four or five days, uh, the river's been really blown out. We're looking at about 1800 to 2100, anywhere in there. And it really hasn't come down. We thought it was going to a couple times, like last night, they said they were going to drop it. We got more rain, they left the dam open to let water out. So what does that mean if you are planning on coming into town to fish? It means you want to be focused on the creeks and streams that flow into the river and the tributaries. That's your North Sandy, South Sandy, you know, things like that. Um, any of the smaller creeks and trebs that flow into the river, like Trout Brook, Orwell Brook, things like that. With this high water, normally there are areas that people kind of glance over. And when we get high water like this, they come up significantly and the fish don't want to fight this heavy current either. So they're going to move into places like that. And if you get in the right spot and the water isn't too turned over with sediment, like that kind of chocolate milk looking water, you can really get into some fish. Uh, a friend of mine has been at Trout Brook for a little over a week and every day he just keeps sending me pictures of kings. And some of them are pretty beaten up. Some of them not so much. Now, touching on that too, the kings that I'm seeing, a lot of them are starting to look pretty beaten up, like that, you know, zombie look in the eye. They've got the white patches of, uh, you know, on their flesh that it's decaying, which is an indicator that now is a good time to switch to white for the steelhead. So this, you know, late in the season, when the salmon have dropped their eggs, the females are, you know, uh, dropping eggs for their nests. A lot of them can get swept away or they get caught in these back eddies. And when the water temperature drops, they get washed out like a white look, uh, white looking egg. And that's what the steelhead are looking for. The steelhead follow the salmon run because they're looking for those eggs. Earlier in the season, when the females start dropping loose eggs here and there, if you've ever um, had your glasses on and seen, you know, a little pool or like the back end of a slip where there are some female salmon hanging out and a steelhead, you'll actually see the steelhead come up and ram the females in the side to try and get them to drop loose eggs. So now when the females are naturally dropping eggs and they get washed out in the river, they get this white look, the steelhead will come up and just pick those off. And that's what they're looking for to feed on. The steelhead are not like the salmon. They don't come into the river to reproduce and die. The steelhead come in and actually hold out in the river all winter long. So they are here to sustain life. They are actively feeding. They're aggressive. They are looking for food sources. And a washed out egg in that white color is a food source. Going back to the salmon that have like the white patches on them, they're <laughs> as gross as it sounds. Salmon, when they start to decay, you'll see them built up along the sides. Patches of their flesh will break off and go down the river. That gets that washed out like dead decayed look too. The steelhead will also eat that. White woolly boogers or any white, you know, flesh fly or something like that would also probably work quite well right now. And that's why. It's just something that the steelhead is looking for in its natural food source. And if you can emanate that well with the right colors and that washed out look, it can be very effective for the steelhead. Other good steelhead colors are pink and blue. Um, pink, I can kind of see. Some fish really like pink. Blue, no one's ever really been able to figure this one out. There's a lot of theories, but um, fun fact, the uh, soft plastic jarred eggs that most people get, the brand is now Atlas, but it actually used to be Jensen. Uh, they were called Jensen eggs, and they started making the blue eggs. When Atlas bought Jensen out and took over that company, they stopped making the blue eggs for a couple years because they said that Oswego County, New York, United States, was the only place that they sold to in the world that ever wanted blue, which tells you that blue is a popular color here for, we don't know why, the steelhead like it, but it does work so well and is so popular, they started making it again, which is why you can still get them from that brand today. Obviously, other brands have picked up on that as well and make them, and you know they're not the only ones anymore where you can get it. But that's why you still can get it. It was just in such high demand here and predominantly for the steelhead. So pink, blue, maybe a little bit of orange, but white as well for the steelhead are colors that we're going to be looking for. If you are in town and you want to try and get on the main river and not really hit up any of the cricks and tribs, my best advice 
for that would be the fish are closer to the banks than you think. You don't have to get back out to your favorite spot, like that favorite rock that you normally stand on, the you know, to find the fish. The fish are probably going to be at coming up the other side of your favorite rock where you normally stand. If you try and get out to where you would normally be in the river, the fish will be going right behind you. I see it all the time. I mean, they it's hard for them to get up in this current, so they're going to be forced up the side, and that's where you're going to find them. The trick is, once you hook them, they shoot out into the heavy current that we're dealing with now, and you're probably going to get spooled. I mean, it's hard enough to slow them down as it is this time of year, and, uh, well, any time of year, I guess. The steelhead have a lot of fight in them, but with the water being up like this, when they have that current on their side, it's really hard to get them turned around, so keep that in mind. Something you do want to look for with the steelhead, one of their favorite tricks, is they'll take off a million miles an hour downriver, and you're just trying to slow them down. You've got your rod tip up and they're taking drag. All of a sudden, the line goes slack and you think, oh, fish off. No, steelhead are smart. That fish turn around and is now headed back at you as fast as it can. When you feel that, you need to be going downstream, reeling line as much as you can, as quickly as you can, so that they don't get that momentum. Because if you let the line go slack, they're going to get that momentum. And when they come up the other way and hit the end of the line, pops your hook, fish off. So that's something to keep in mind. They're very smart, very tricky. I've definitely fallen to that trick that they play a couple times. So definitely something to keep an eye out for. Uh, for those of you that are still looking for the salmon, I would say North Sandy, South Sandy, Trout Brook, Orwell, all of the tribs and things like that would be your best bet at that, at, at finding those. Um, we did have some coho come through recently. I have heard that those are in the tribs as well. But it's just right now with all of the leaves coming into the water, it can make it difficult when you're, you know, taking leaves off of your hook every drift. It gets very old very quickly. And then with the water turned over, kind of that chocolate milk look also makes it difficult. So wait for that to clear back down and settle a little bit. And I think those would be really good. Once the main river comes back down, I truly think the steelhead is going to, uh, the steelhead bite's going to pick up significantly and make for some really good fishing coming up. We're just waiting on that water level at this point.